Welcome back to Facts of Reality. This is Fellas Let's Talk with a Bad Boy Show. So go, because it's your host. If I don't do no smoking, somebody got to be out there goddamn mom, because they just don't know me. You did. I'm going to tell you this. Radio can be even more exposure. Read it. Okay. <clears throat> now, today's topic, as we know, are extraterrestrials real. And we're going to get this topic out of the way so I can get back to some other things. Like I could say, I'm ready to roller skate onto my nature or what I have to do. But I'll tell you like this. When it comes to a vampire, you couldn't see a better slave than Blade. You hey, know, you get guarantee you just probably went over your head in that way. But just stay with me here. Understand, we have been taught to live in a secret world. Why would say they have secret societies? If you don't know, of course, it is lost like a diamond as well as a pearl. You understand now, and what I'm about to tell you is not being a modest. I tried to be and not trying. I want to tell you, listen here. Everything we were taught was been taught in reverse. Maps are upside down. We did we a lot of things we taught are the gist, et cetera, et cetera. It's not what we think we know. So you take that into consideration. You may know some things to know to have in consideration if you go. But as I say this, don't be hesitation for hesitation to get you killed, as we all know. But my mind is knowledge is power. So let me stay with you on this topic. Uh, we have different races of different constellations within the spaces because that's why we have different racial radical hatred among our races in these places we're in right now. What I'm saying is everything we go through in the world is a reflection of a constellation wars within different races. Like the Pleiadians. We know the Pleiadians are more related to the Caucasians and we're more related to the Anunnaki which comes from more the nine ether beings of the constellation. The Amsterdam the Anunnaki come from the nine ether beings, which the nine ether being is what the universe is created of mostly and within that is fire. And you know that and you know what I'm saying is true and you know I'm never to be lying. But just keeping you on my pedestal, not as a pedestal of a throne, but more of truth of calling you in the nineties, if you know what I mean. If you're behind me and stay with me, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me if you can. Now, within, within the store galaxy, within the store wars, we had a, a constellation war within the Anunnaki's and the Pleiadians. Now, let's break down the Pleiadians. The Pleiadians who created the Flugoroids. The Flugoroids was the first cave, man. You can Google this and you can see who created the Flugoroids and you'll see that they were created by an all breed of the Pleiadians and a black god named Yaku. Yaku. Now the Pleiadians could not create the Caucasian ancestors or their descendants, which they're the ancestors of because by universal law it was forbidden. So they tricked Yaku, which was a black god scientist who could do what he wanted within the realm in which we were on and with this planet he wanted, he tricked them into doing his bidding for them that he did. So Yaku created these Flogoroid like animal beings and they were what you would call the first Neanderthal before the Neanderthal, the Flogoroids developed into the Neanderthal which was the modern day caveman before it became Homo sapien, Arabia sapien. You'll know these things, you Google it, you'll find it. See, now I'm not just making these things up as well. But anyway, it was all the manipulation of the Pleiadians to maintain their constellation way within their space, you know. And the Pleiadians, which we're gonna go back into different type of extraterrestrials, is really one really main type of extraterrestrial, but we're going to go into different types of aliens. The Pleiadians were more of a humanoid type of being than vice versa as the greys. You see greys on certain movies when you see greys with the big eyes and the big heads and they they're either short or tall with big eyes and small tiny nose and with small lips and bald heads. Them are grays. That's what you call a gray. They arrive from the mixing of genetics between different races. If you don't know about that, grays are future genetics of all the races mixed with each other. That's why they're called grays, and that's an inbreed to keep themselves between the mel the melanin tone of the carbon base between Earth and when we have a solar storm. So please don't try to think I'm over saying things uneducatedly. Stay with me.
not trying to say you can't understand what I'm saying. Before we have a solar storm, certain races will have a whole bunch of mixing within the genetics. But then within its genetics, this is why I tell you guys, Mike don't know this, you can mix breed all you want, but in the future, it might cause your future generational kids to, whether you believe it, mutate. Um, they even say, scientists say hundreds of thousands of years in the future, human's head will get bigger. The only reason human's head will get bigger from mixed genetics of races. That's the only way and the only reason you have the grays. The gray race is the aliens that are mixed with so many different races and the, throughout the years in the future, genetically as the air suppressed back into real formal air not the oxygen in which we breathe it compresses the minds and it makes the brain grow as a stringal cranium if you know what i mean a cranium is the brain the brain school and it grows a string cranium within the air pressure in order to survive within this atmosphere but blacks and i'm not just being saying this being mean we will remain the same you no know, period if you're not genetically slicing your genetics and dna but that's where the gray race come from. That's all breed between the whites and all of their races mixing, et cetera, et cetera. That's the gray race. The Pleiadians and the grays have a connection working with the draconian reptilian shapeshifters that they work with, they work with, that they're, they're working, et cetera, et cetera. You get what I'm saying, et cetera, et cetera. Long story short, let me let me go on and write this shit down. Now, long story short, we are being watched and monitored by civilization. Why you think the world is so corrupted, but it never goes out of balance of corruption? Because we are being watched. You want to say by God or God-like extraterrestrials, aliens, beings, etc., etc. I would have to say to you, if you believe that it's so much space in the universe that's free of space that has not been explored, like just as well as the ocean, 85% of the ocean have not been yet explored. So if you think we know everything that's in the ocean shore, below the shore, that we ignore for so many years that we would think that we know, of course, then you just don't know of sort. Because everything we've been told has been a lie, not a joke. So just taking that into consideration, everything we've been taught was a bunch of ignorance to take into consideration of ignorance is bliss. We'll be a backwards show. How'd I end it with a backwards smoke? You did. Want to say this? Scientifically been proven that Earth was inhabited by different civilizations before we got here. Not just the civilizations we think we know of. The movies you think are not real, when they talk about Mount Olympus, the Zeus, the, the, the gods, ancient gods, Christians might consider this heresy. Now let's get back into a lot of things. The Gnostics. The Gnostics believe we lived in a matrix and we were among different constellational beings, things we were not informed of in reality because the world wants to keep these things from us. The Gnostics, the real Christians, these were the Christians before. See, they call you guys, the Christians out there, you're called the Coptic Christians. You know why they called you the Coptic Christian? Because you was sick, you was the third Christians that arrived after the Council of Nicaea. You came from the Council of Nicaea, the first Christians to wage war against the Gnostics because of their heresy beliefs. But their heresy beliefs, most of the time, the Council of Nicaea and the Coptic Christians, like our modern day Christians, they're doing business with the government as we speak right now. They made the government over four point four four hundred and seventy five billion dollars in acronyms a year. So what type of government would do business with the devil? 
try to keep your mind closed. So, you know, we just, we just, we just pull these uh, stories out here to tell you the truth and hope you enjoy the story that, that you do, and you do, you know. <coughs> but, um, I can't complain for rain, you know what I mean? You know what I'm really saying, right? Let me get back to the what I bought the rhyme around. Oh, this this I'm trying to see what the old boy finna do with this four wheeler. He leaving. Okay. Woo, cause that shit is a no one. <coughs> okay, um let me say this. We've been taught that civilization started. 5,000 years ago or 2,000 years ago, but we know Earth to be way older than that. The scientific research of that, the Earth is 10 times, if not the millions of times older than what we thought to be. It would prove that we seek from just the artifacts. You see what I'm saying? So, we have artifacts that are that predate three hundred thousand years ago from the Mesotomian ticks. We go to the Mesotomian ticks, their emerald tablets, the Book of Tiamat, the Book of the Dead, Dead Sea Scrolls. You know, you go look at all these the Epic of Gilgamesh. Read all these literal texts. These they predate the give epic of give me pray when I say predate probably more than likely mildly sourly hmm, about thirty thousand years ago. Mesotonian text two hundred some thousand years ago, some of them three, even older, you know. Um and it talks about the Texas of in in Enlil. And you go to them, they have stories of them coming here to mind. Anunnaki came here to mine for gold to preserve the realm of which the planet Nibiru is from. Let me say this again. Let me break that down because I might have said I went over my own head because I think I might have said something that I could have said a little more better in, in, in a mild matter. The Anunnaki have a stationary planet. I mean, let me say this. They have an unstationary planet called Nebiru, which we can travel as a spaceship. Within this planet, these are the extraterrestrials. These are the extraterrestrial like beings. Within their planet, they're actually able to drive this planet. They actually take this planet and go as they fit, see fit between constellation belts and past is so, so be, unlike the Pleiadians that so need. We see a lot of disbelief for those that don't believe because they say, oh, that's fallen angels. <laughs> yeah. And this is what the Gnostics would warn us about when it comes to the Gnostics, Christians, and uh, um, the Council of Nicaea because they hold the truth, but they won't tell the world the truth. The Pope knows the truth. That's why the Pope worship a black god. You go, you go to the Pope Vatican, they had a black god in there. The Pope worship. The blacks near it because they know that's where the extraterrestrial genetics come from. From the modern time during Eve genetic gene within a black woman. And which that rides from an extraterrestrial Anunnaki gene in Leo and Inky. When you go look into those Mesotonian texts, listen to those, you go and read into those and you'll see what they going to telling you. Inky and Enlil were sent here to mine gold and they found this planet and within the urgency of that one urgent need indeed was to help themselves manage themselves and getting this gold in order to protect their planet which was about to blow up from 
so much magnesium heat between the constellation of the sun burning and them not having protection metal plates to keep their core between their earth and the sun from overheating they needed metal so they sent out them to in search for metal what's up with you what's up with you they sent them to out for metal and then within that they have this sort of thing where they had to write history down write history come over here come here they did write history then. Rewriting history, I mean writing history. Writing history, they had to take the words of which we hear today and we how we got the words of the scribes. Like people that say they wrote Bible texts. The first scribes actually came from the extraterrestrials and aliens, if you say. They had scribes to write literature that they came to the planet, and it's actually proved within literature that you could say, actually, and actually artifacts actually proven with the schools. It's proof that giants walked the earth, whether you want to know this or not, and they all descended from an Anunnakian genetic gene. <clears throat> Zeus, the god of Mount Olympus, was an Anunnaki extraterrestrial god-like being that refused to give up his place within the worldly kingdom. Or we say the kingdom of this worldly world, etc., etc. We see it's so much evidence that points them to where we refuse to peep because our eyes are indeed and a meditation of sleep. And we say, oh, those were falling angels because the Bible chose us. But do you know who the Bible was wrote by? How can the Bible be wrote? If you read the text is from the Bible and you read any of the Mesopotamian texts, the real texts that actually describe the disciples, that knew the disciples, they would tell you the disciples were damn illiterate. They didn't have a scribe. They didn't have, they didn't have a scribe. And they damn shell, damn, damn, damn near, don't barely knew how to speak. But damn, damn, damn sure, for sure, could not read or write. This is actual factual. So whatever disciples you say wrote the New Testament, you you, you, you find evidence. I would like to see them. But on long story short, we're going to get back to our the extraterrestrials and celestials. Well, is the aliens are real, and the answer is yes, they are real. Yeah. Yes, they are real. Let's get back to how we know. Well, I'm talking about one of my personal experiences. And this is what you guys are going to really like. This here, and I like them the atmosphere. You did. I seen UFOs, bro. I have. But I'm going to break down some things I might have said, but I'm going to break up down even more in previous shows that I've seen before. Aliens don't fuck with black people. You know why I just said it? They're more the descendants of the white Caucasian race. You know what I'm saying? They're more descendant ancestors of the white race. So you, you, I might have heard stories where people said they were abducted, but it's no proof. Um, it's actually been proof of people that said, white people that said they were abducted or some stuff. They went missing and people couldn't find them for a certain amount of hours, days, et cetera, et cetera. 
weird type of shit happened since they can't they come back they had type of scores um implants things that just couldn't be really described within our technology like they was infiltrated from a different type of being you know they had implants of something metal in their in their body every all of these people that were inducted and the doctors tried to cut it and they couldn't cut through it it was that strong so long story short black people <laughs> We don't get abducted by aliens. I'm sorry. It's just don't don't happen. But long story short, let's get back to my situation. I seen the UFO before. I was outside my mother's house. Go back to my store. So outside my mother's home. Getting high as Papa was a Rolling Stone. Thinking about it. Damn it, I'm hiding in giraffe pussy. Well, I just got high. I don't know. Damn. And I'm sitting. And I'm, and I'm in my right mind. Now, I'm just high on marijuana. Now, I'm not high on anything else here. So I'm gonna, don't, let me tell you this, I'm in, I'm in the right mind. Because I can tell you this, I'm gonna tell you why I'm in the right mind and tell you after I tell the story. I looked up as I'm, I'm, I'm just chilling in the driveway. My mother has a, a core porch, which she has a roof over the core porch. But I'm, I'm under, I'm over the part where, by the end of the driveway, where I'm a little further more away from the roof and the core porch if I might say. So I'm pretty much looking at the trees and looking at up at the sky. And when I look up, I see like seven little circles flying right on the side of each other. It would have to be an exact that many, like seven circles. But it was like a pattern, like a triangle. Then they just shifted to a different little mode. I'm like, what the fuck? Then they all separated. You know what I'm saying? They was close by each other. I'm looking at it, and they move so fast. The, oh my God, I seen jets move fast. The, they, that is the speed of light. You see how you turn on a light switch and a light just hit you right there? How they just disappeared so fast, they reappeared. And I looked at it, then they peaked, they disappeared again. But I know Trey so fast, I was like, whoa. One thing I can say, if they wanted to get me, how throw it? world portrays aliens to be a, like a national threat you know what i'm saying i definitely don't see that that's why i, I believe we also got to take consideration everything we see that might be alien or extraterrestrial like it's not maybe always that either but you when you do see it you will definitely know it you definitely would know it for sure just as well looking at a plant when it's growing you would know it. Um, the government has like extra advanced out of space like the technology if you might don't know. They really do. Um, so they play games with us on an X file level, but a lot of things you see in the X files are true and a lot of it is government like cast the blast in our mind like to get us to think something else, but it's them playing games the whole time. But really most of the time, sometimes, it's actually the real thing because this is how you know it's the real thing because the aliens and the you and the extraterrestrials have they have laws of the universe where they're not allowed to harm us unless we try to harm them. So if you're not a threat to them, more likely they're not a threat to you and how they would just over my head so fast and just I'm all the sip saying was I don't know if they would have wanted to duck because I'm black, but if they sure wanted to, to torch my ass, <laughs> you know, whatever they wanted to do, you know, they could have kidnapped me or whatever and dropped me off somewhere, who knows? But, you know, they didn't do anything. But, so I got a, I have a different type of input in what the, the world say about outer space or extraterrestrials which I know those were, I think, were more alien-like beings. Um, I don't believe those. Or those could have been fragments of mother ships, warships from the mother ship. So those could have been Anunnaki's. But and most Anunnaki's come on bigger ships. They come on more like mother warships. That's where you get the word war ship from and the word worship from worship was from worship and you guys might don't know that 
um, that's where the t ideology of worshiping a god came from. When the ancients would see the warships, they would give them a like uh, ideology like presence of homage to them to the point where they were so infatuated with them of learning from them and learning of their ways and learning how to you know roll with them and the frequency of growing to a major escaping the slavery of the matrix then you will understand they were saying they was had like a vibration of homage towards them that it felt like they worshiped they worship their warship. See what I'm saying? They worship their warship. And you pay attention how we talk about God. God lives in the sky. You see what I'm saying? God lives in the sky. And we worship, we worship God. And really, we, we really worship a theology of when the God we should be worshiping is the God within ourselves, which we should be researching for responsibility when within ourselves. It's what the constellation has told us as well, because God is within ourselves as well. It's good. It's good, man. I say. My I say. Um <clears throat> we have got to the point where we feel we're the only ones here. And if you actually look into civilization, who wants to be the only one here? You do you wake up, you will, you already feel a alone but some of you guys don't tell it tell it to yourself because most of you guys are on your phone you guys don't get off social media and you stay on social media you don't you don't check the frequency within your vibration and know if your mind is right in a proper place a higher nation of debation of you always letting yourself off the temptation and sure of not nature of knowing what's real and what's fake within this matrix it's all slavery and it's cool but see Life is beautiful when you actually get to know that certain things are real and certain things just not real. Time is an illusion. And this is why the extraterrestrials and aliens are able to fly through light year speed and through portals and within our galaxy of our realm, which we call Earth, this planet key, um, key planet Kai and Tiamat which are in this realm, they're actually able to do amazing things at the speed of light. Because without even a hesitation of flight, they're able to, to move without any sound. When I looked at these aliens, back to the story, when I looked at this, all these could be, these could have been Anunnaki. Because like I said, it could have been a fragment of a warship of the Anunnaki that sent out to watch or they could have been aliens. They could have been the blue aliens. They could have been the greys. You know, the greys and blue aliens have their own space ship that can time travel through time, travel through air, water, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But when I looked at it, it's it's they made no noise. This is the most. It's not only say spooky thing. You can say it if it's spooky to you. If you hear, if that's what you do. And you want to give it ear to say what you dare to hear. Um, it was just very intriguing. The one of the most intriguing things when I looked up to see all these things flying in the air and they're not making one sound. But they're going so freaking fast. They was they were still for one for I say a good five seconds. I they still. Like I look up, look up, right? There they go. I look up. Like, what? Look down, they look up. They gone. They come back. I see them moving. They break apart. Like I told you, they broke apart. They disappear again. So, I'm telling you, man, I used to laugh at this one dude that I went to school with. He used to say he seen a whole bunch of UFOs. It was crazy, too. His story was just like mine. His name was Aaron from Lakewood. Never forget his name. Met him at the alternative school. And uh, our Muslim teacher, certain religion teaches that technology and UFOs are real. Islam, different religions have do teach. This is the only thing I understand about because when the Bible talks about certain things, a lot of people don't know it. When it talks about Ezekiel being 
raptured into heaven on a carrier. He was talking about UFOs. But let's go back to my friend in, in, in high school. Our Muslim teacher asked us, do we believe in UFOs? I said, yeah. She said, well, they real. They want to cover it up. This kind of amazing that she talked about stuff like this here. And um, she like, they real. And the government want to cover it up. But even in Islam, we teach that UFOs are real. We just have to accept the truth. They have more, they have the mothership, and she started breaking it down again. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't get it then, but I understood some of what she's saying because I used to watch a lot of UFO doc documentaries. So I knew about aliens. But she was breaking it down to the point I get everything she's saying. Now, um, even to the point I think I might get something she don't understand. Now, <clears throat> I'm just that much advanced. Um, and she was talking back to my homeboy. She said, have you guys ever seen a UFO? I have to be honest with her. I watch a lot of documentaries. I have never seen one my goddamn self. That's before, remember, that was when I was in high school. My homeboy, he from Lakewood. I just met him. I started, he's a cool guy. I met to another homeboy through Lakewood. And he just started saying, yeah, I was smoking weed, yeah. He's like, y'all smoking weed? And then he said, I looked up, and I, see a, I seen a UFO. And I'm, I'm like, okay. Yo, you, you was smoking weed, right? You must have had some of that weed. <laughs> or, or I say, or that's just a good ass weed here. You know what I'm saying? He's like, nah, I'm serious. I'm serious. I didn't, I'm blind a lot. I really thought he was kissing his teacher's ass. You know what I'm saying? But he really was serious as a horror fan. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, because I believe the teacher. Because I tell you, I watched, I watched documentaries. You know what I'm saying? Back then, I was even when I was a Christian, I was just infatuated with UFOs. And I used to tell everybody about them. I was like, I tell people other people's stories. But I never had my personal encounter with a goddamn UFO or extraterrestrial. You know, until I came into my higher self. You know what I'm saying? I came into my higher self, came out of religion, politics, you know, um, the populist mind state of the matrix in which it portrays a mind to take, you know, I started to see things different and the universe started to show me things, especially as I started meditating, meditating and vibrating, getting the frequency of a higher nation. Then I started to see things. And it goes back to that story where I laughed at my homeboy. You remember, I laughed at my homeboy at school. And then I'm in my, I'm 30s. And I'm in my driveway and I'm looking up. Not just in my mother's driveway. And I look up and I say, oh my freaking God. A fucking UFO. By the time I say that, it's when they break apart. They was in seven groups. They broke apart, broke apart, came back together. Did some super fast shit. It was gone. Like so fucking fast with no fucking noise. I could have saying, man, I laughed at this boy. Which like part of me, part of me did kind of at the wall. My teacher's like, nah, he could be telling the truth. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yeah, maybe he is telling the truth. I gave him a break. I said, I gave him the benefit of the doubt because I'm a type of person. You could tell me you jumped off water and you and you walked on it. If you say you jumped on water and walked on it, maybe you Jesus and I don't know again. And maybe I'm just I'm on some new weed and I'm coughing too strong when it's coughing. You know what I'm saying? But who cares? Who cares? You know, that's your story. If you say it, but I still have to give you the benefit of the doubt, even if you're crazy. So, I just like, you know, maybe telling the truth. You know what I'm saying? But I, I didn't know for real the sincerity of empathy and towards truth that he was telling. To the point, it was scary. And um, when you end up in that same shoe, with the same shoe on the same feet, with the same shoe on the same feet if you do, you understand what I'm telling you. You know, it's actually just true. You see things, and you see things in different realms. But basically, with a lot of things we talk about within our realms and religion, the Gnostics, which lead the religions to talk about, they were the first real Christians. Um, they actually mentioned that Jesus talked about different things within his parables that actually meant for the constellations in which we don't travel within our vibration to understand we have to meditate to understand the God of ourselves that is connected to the universe which moves in a non ether being of solar energy that controls everything, even the electricity within the grids of everything we see, which nature appears to be. Is what I'm saying. But 
religion has been told to so many people that it's just told to those people. So you say, you say, you say. <clears throat> and I'm going to end it up on this note. Give me another book before I go. I think I touched pretty much basis what I wanted to touch. Um, let's see. I think I pretty much touched basis on everything. We're going to talk about the other extraterrestrials and aliens another time. We get like the Syrians, uh, Syri um, the Syrians, the Silesians. Syrians, uh, Delarians, the mermaids, the, the sirens, the giants, the Netherlands. We're going to talk about all these things and these entities on Earth time. Which I think I touched on mostly. I want to touch on the different extraterrestrials and and the difference between extraterrestrial and the aliens. That's pretty much what we touched on, right? You know what I'm saying? So that's pretty much what I want to touch on. So hope you guys stress less. Have a blessed day even with life give you a test. You always owe Look, those things that might give the other person a chest break, but hey, what can I say? Kid can't get no breaks, but eventually you'll get yours. But understand that for every testing is a blessing.